a great American. I'm sorry, honestly, I just don't love that word. What drew you to this project? Oh, Shayna Taub, Lee Silverman, and the public. Those mm -hmm. were the, the big three that got me. Um, because I was I I've been involved with it since early 2018. And okay. I was at breakfast um with a friend and my email dinged, and it was about this reading for this show written by Shayna Taub. I'd been a fan of her for years. Lee Silverman was directing love everything she touches and then it was mm -hmm. public which has been a bucket list place for me since I moved here in 2007 so oh yeah okay. it, was, uh, it was like those three things I was like check 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 right so or callbacks or any of that stuff you were just right in it from the no, get-go then this was for um this was for just like a really fast and dirty 29 hour reading um okay. we were there for like a maybe two weeks and um, those things usually don't have, uh, usually right. don't have a, a, a audition process. Some do, there are some like bigger projects that will, right. um, but this was so small. I think there were only nine songs written and, okay. um, Rachel Sussman, who is our, one of our lead producers is a very dear friend of mine. And mm -hmm. I, think when they were like compiling the team, I would assume she floated my name and Lee had right. seen me in a, a very silly Christmas concert and Shayna had seen me perform at Pace um, where mm -hmm. I went to school. And so they oh, were okay. like, yeah, we, we've we seen her work in silly things and <laughs> why not? So yeah, very, very grateful that my name was floated into that room. My God, very grateful. <laughs> what was your first rehearsal like? Oh, I will never forget it. I walked into the room and I saw Jen Colella, Nikki M. James, and Krista Rodriguez having a conversation. And I mm -hmm. walked out of the room and I went back to the front desk and I was like, hi, I think you sent me to the wrong room. I'm here for the public. <laughs> and they were like, no, it's like room 2B. And I was like, it can't be because Jen Colella, Nikki M. James, and Krista right. Rodriguez are having a conversation. I don't belong in that room. <laughs> um... But it was, it was so welcoming. I was so like, my imposter syndrome was off the charts. It was yeah. Nikki M. James, Elise Allen Lewis, Jen Colella, Krista Rodriguez, Steph Shu, Sarah Steele. And I yeah. was like, and, and me, and I was like, and Grace, Grace McLean as well. And I was like, yep. I like one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> like I hadn't really done anything big and like, you know, I was still like very much trying to like break through right. and I walk into this room with these Titans and I was like, what am I doing here? Like this so is what the hell am I doing here? This is a mistake. This is a, this is clearly <laughs> a mistake. I've been sent to the wrong address. Um, it was so, it was so incredible. Everybody was so kind. Like Jen was, and I had just seen her and come from away like two weeks prior mm -hmm. It's like, you know, she's Jen Colella and I was so yes. starstruck by everyone I was in the room with, but they were all so kind and just down to earth and welcoming. And then we started learning the music. And I think we started mm -hmm. with the younger at the gates. And uh -huh. I just remember learning that music. And I was like, holy shit, this is like, this is very special. This is mm -hmm. very, this music is really cool. And mm -hmm. The fact that it was a room full of women was really cool. Like, I, I just remember being like, oh, this is going to be something very special. Right, right. Yeah, yeah and it's it's great because so many musicals have so many men. You look like at all the, the breakdowns and it's like men, 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 men. Oh, here's a few girls. Here's here's yeah. the love interest. Here's yeah. this. I mean, I always love to look at Les Mis, right? You have like all yeah. of these men and then you have <laughs> like archetypes of women. You have like yep. the the virgin the sinner the, yep. the, like it's just like the it's sinner it's nuts yeah 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 we definitely need more of that more independent women musicals more independent women projects more women of color you know we need a lot more in this industry speaking of which what do you think could change in this industry like there are so many so many things oh, that we just talk about as actors how much time <laughs> do we have is the question i mean i could go on for days <laughs> I do think I do think we're in a very interesting moment in our industry where we're seeing things change and it's feeling yes. very like 
there is this like new wave of like the new guard and then there's the old guard, right? right? And what's interesting is it's like, there are some people in the old guard who are very adaptable and willing to change and like eager and hungry to kind of usher in this new age. And then there are right. some people who are very resistant and who are really digging their heels in. And I think when we talk about like, you know, theater needs to change. We're talking about some of those old guard people who are just yep. so stringent and so want it to stay the same. But I right. think um, like a big thing just across the board, we need more diversity in every sense of oh, like yes. gender, race, size, like body diversity as well. Because um, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that I love so much about our show in particular is like, it is a truly diverse cast of humans. Yes. In every aspect of the word, you know, it's like, and, and I, it's not lost on me that I'm a bigger body on stage in a, a principal role. And the role has nothing to do with the size of my body. I can just mm -hmm. exist like 10 years mm -hmm. ago. That would not have been the case. I will maybe right. with this, Shana is all things kind and empathetic and truly progressive, but like, I know, know yeah, I know what you mean. number of times that like, I've been playing a character that is fat just because we needed a comic thing so we're right, gonna like the character role the character role and like we're the body is going to be like a punchline like you're or you mm -hmm. or it's like the number of times that i've received a breakdown where it's like the character is depressed maybe she's fat and it's like people are depressed all the time without necessarily yeah. being overweight you know what i mean it's like right. the two are mutually exclusive and i think we are really moving away from that i think it's still it, it does still exist but i think people are trying to be a lot more conscious about that but like, I don't know. I just think we're at a very interesting time where we're finally talking about all of these things that have been wrong and weird for a very long time. And people yep. are actually in positions to do something about it. So I I am excited for change to happen. And I think there's a lot of change that that needs to happen. And, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I think another thing too that I that I talk about a lot with my friends is like a lot of people are like, well, it was hard for me, so it should be hard for everyone. And my response is like, my guy, I'm so sorry that that was your experience. I'm sorry that it was hard for you, but it doesn't need to be that way moving forward. Like just because right. you struggled does not mean that somebody else needs to struggle or take on that trauma for you. Right. You know? Um, and that's really like the biggest change, I think, is just like the like the stopping of perpetual trauma can we all just like try to move forward and heal yeah. together there's really good art to be made and it doesn't need to be hard it doesn't need to be a slog you don't need to leave rehearsal crying you know it's like we can right. do hard work and have hard conversations in a kind empathetic and like truly transformative way right right yeah what was your favorite song to sing in Safsa Musical and why was it your favorite? What what were you feeling when you were singing it? Ooh, oh man. I mean, well, there is a song that doesn't exist anymore. It's okay. when, we were, when we were at the public, it was called I Wasn't There. And it was after after the 19th Amendment is passed. And like it it should be this really big celebratory moment and it's actually it was really this quiet song where all the characters come in and we're just saying like nobody was there when the 19th amendment got signed into law like there was no woman mm -hmm. invited because like you know mm -hmm. when you see like when you see laws being passed like it's like the crowd yep. of people around the president and somebody gets to keep the pen and like that yep. didn't happen for these women they were not afforded that celebratory moment and right. it was just, it was a very cathartic moment of like being like, we did this thing and yet we didn't get to celebrate it. And it eventually, it did not make it to the Broadway version because I think it, yeah. it was a bit of a downer, but like, oh. I just loved it so much. And like all of us who were with it at the public, like we really, we missed that song, but we understand why it didn't transfer. Right. Like next moment is, it's such a stunning moment that we have now um, in its place, but I just loved that moment and I loved the sort of tongue in cheek of being like, it's like really hard to be a woman sometimes. It's and yeah. the whole show is kind of about that. Like oh, yeah. the whole show is kind of like that. But that moment specifically, it's like the number of times, even in like today's society in like 2024, 
where like something really amazing happens and you kind of have to like tamper it down because you can't yeah. show your excitement. You can't, you can't get emotional because then it's like, oh, she's hysterical. She's out of her mind. She's it's like, dramatic. It's like, yeah, it's like a Barbie monologue. Exact 100%. Oh my God. Yeah. When I saw that. I'm sure like every other woman, I was watching that monologue and I just, I just started crying. It wasn't even like ugly crying. I was just, I felt yeah. so seen and simultaneously so sad. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause that's it. I mean, it's the Barbie monologue. It's the yeah. Barbie monologue. It is. It is. You, you know, you can't be too pretty. Then you look too, pr yeah. you know, you look too prideful. You can't be ugly because then you look unattractive. You can't smile yeah. because you look, you it's celebrate. like, you can't celebrate because then it makes you ungrateful. It's like, it's a snake eating its own tail. Sometimes you just want to, and then I think of sports, right? Where like a yeah. guy comes to the end zone and does a little, like a dance, a celebratory yeah. dance. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But I like we won this incredible thing and we just had to be like, thank you so much for the opportunity. Like it's just it's nuts. It's nuts. It's it nuts. Is. What was the move to New York like? Oh, it was it was crazy. I moved here when I was 17. I mean, I graduated yeah. from from high school and then I came here. Um, but I will say coming to school in the city, I think really helped the transition because. I had the landing pad of the school, right. you know, like I, a lot of my friends who I've met, who like went to school somewhere else and then moved here after school, there was such a learning curve for those first couple of months. Cause I mean, the city is insane. It's an insane place. Oh yeah. It's insaner by the minute, but, like learning the city, learning the subways, learning how like time moves differently here. It's like so fast paced, but also the MTA will make a minute feel like three hours, you know? It's oh like, yeah. Figuring all of that out while having this safety net of being in school was amazing. Pace was not a school that did not let you audition outside of your program. A lot of, a lot of MTA, uh, MTA, oh my God, I'm, what am I saying? BFA programs. I'm like, you're still on the train. You're I'm still on the train. It never leaves your brain. A lot of BFA programs will not let you audition outside right. of the program because it's like, you're too young. You're not ready, blah, blah, blah. But Pace actually was really good about being like, yeah, just like, don't fuck it up. Like go and like oh. represent, represent yourself right. in the school very well, which I thought was a good way of putting it, you know? Yeah. Also like going to auditions and like learning what that process was like, was very helpful to then also come back to the school and talk to the teachers and be like, so this was an interesting thing. And they're like, yeah, that's, that's how it will be. Or that was just a strange thing. Like, so my right. move to the city felt oddly cushioned in a way that I'm very grateful for. And I don't think is a lot of people's experience, but I was very, very grateful to have school be the reason that brought me here because right. it, it was just such a, a very safe, for lack of a better word, introduction to a city that is built on chaos and yeah. lies. <laughs> <laughs> chaos, lies, noise, pigeons. Yeah. Pigeons everywhere. Pigeons. Yeah. Angry people. <laughs> They're so angry. I had a friend uh, visiting. He saw stuffs a couple days ago and we, we got dinner after yep. and he went to school here too. So like, you know, he, he knows the city very well, but he now lives in DC and he was like, everyone is so angry now. It wasn't yeah. like this. And I'm like, it wasn't, I think, I think there are a lot of factors that go into it, but like the pandemic, I think changed. Yes. All of and it's just the different vibe. Now everyone's a breath away from a brawl. <laughs> yes. How has the fan interaction been? I, I, it looks like people have been really, you know, taken with you and very sweet from them seeing like comments on Twitter and Instagram, you know, that must be really surreal. It is very surreal. Um, I mean, fan, fan interactions have been amazing. Um, it's not lost on me that like, I wouldn't have a job without them. So I'm right. very grateful. Um, and I love meeting people. I love talking to people. And also this show specifically, it strikes such a nerve with people that like the conversations that I have at the stage door, or, like the people who reach out over Instagram, Twitter admittedly scares me. I'm not really on, I'm on, oh, Twitter. Yeah. I'm not really on That's Twitter. It's a little terrifying. Sorry, X formerly Twitter. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that site <laughs> um but 
it's been, it's been really, really lovely. And it like, hasn't, I don't think it's fully hit me as someone, you know, who I was bullied for a very long time growing up. Like it, really? hasn't, it hasn't hit that. Like, Oh, a lot of people like you. Like there's a part of my brain that's like, okay, but like, am I going to blow it? Am I going to do something wrong? Like, am I it's right? Just, it's, right. You know, it's, it's, it's very interesting, um, meeting people and, and having people say like, you've had such an impact on me and I'm, I'm really just trying to do my job and do justice to the show. And it's been, it's been very special and a little overwhelming, but like in a very good, in a very good way, in a very good yeah. way. I'm just not used to like all of this positive oh <laughs> it's like it's been it's been interesting it's so there's a learning yeah curve. have you been happy with the reviews you know you're gonna say you're not gonna believe me I don't really read the reviews I don't really That's read smart. Them. I that is smart. um and it's funny because my, my manager I love her so much but like I told her I don't read the reviews and then opening night she sent me like a a snapshot of the review from the times where I was mentioned. And I was like, Rochelle, I don't want to know these uh, things. Like, I don't want to know. But she was like, but this was a really good one. This is really good. Like, this is good. They named you, they named you specifically. So like I, I've, from what I have gathered, the reviews have been pretty good and mm -hmm. that's great. <laughs> I'm so thrilled that they've been yeah. great. I think, okay. I think reviews are a little, I don't want to say silly, but it's like, I think how we review things could be reevaluated. Right. I think the fact that like, the fact that the New York Times holds so much power and it comes down to like two or three people from a very specific socioeconomic background with very yep. specific points of view, with a very specific agenda in a lot of ways, I think think could be reevaluated. I was talking with Pippa when we were at the public and she had such a great idea. She was like, why is it not a conversation? Why is it not like a review for the times? Like you get someone from lifestyle, art and entertainment, you get someone yeah. from sports, from business, they all go see the show. And then you get like, just like maybe a random person who just like, right. like come see a show with us. You, you go see the show and then you have a conversation about it. Like, why mm -hmm. is it like that? Because some of the, and it's funny, I don't read reviews for shows that I'm in, but I do read reviews for other shows. And so yeah. like, you read these reviews and then you go see the show and it's like, what were you talking about? Either positively yeah. or negatively. It's like, it is so based on one person's perspective and point of view that day. And in a lot of cases, it can make or break a show. And I yes. just think like with great power comes great responsibility. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's feels like a lot of times that responsibility is not really followed through on yep. or can you just be like very, I don't know. I just think like this season in particular, there were a lot of shows that were done very dirty by some reviewers and they were great. I enjoyed a lot of the shows that I saw this season that I was able to see. And like, I don't know. I just think how we review things could be different. What was it like to partner with Hillary Clinton? That must have been really exciting. It was. And I called it the day before the announcement came out. We got an email. We got an email being like the announce, like official announcement is going out tomorrow. Cause like we had known that it was transferring, but we can't say anything. Right. right. And we got an email being like the official announcement's going out tomorrow, as well as uh an announcement about like two new producers who are coming on board, which you'll find out about tomorrow. And I was on yep. the phone with my mom and I was like, I bet one of them is going to be Hillary. And she was <laughs> no, why do you think that? And I'm like, I just have a feeling. And I'm so glad that I said it out loud because sometimes I can be a little bit witchy, but I don't speak it. And then I feel crazy because I'm like, I totally thought that, but like, there's everyone's like, okay, Allie. But I verbalized this. <laughs> and I was like, I bet, I bet it's going to be Hillary. And then the next morning when it broke, my mom texted me and she goes, how did you do that? I'm like, I don't know. I just had a feeling, <laughs> but it's been great. She's been so lovely and she's just so into it. Like she was there for our first day of rehearsal and we Aww. all thought that she was just going to kind of come for the photo op and then leave. But she like stayed for the music rehearsal and was wow. like sitting at the table with the creatives, just like going through the music with us. And I was like, this is nuts. This is bonkers. Yeah. And then she came to the Zitz probe. And again, 
we were like, oh, she'll just like come, like we'll take a picture and she'll leave. She stayed for the whole thing. She stayed wow. for the whole thing and has just been so supportive and so moved by it. And she's so lovely and kind. And I feel like we're like, like the cast were like three interactions away from being invited to Chappaqua. You know what I mean? Like that's the goal. <laughs> That's the goal. We, we want to go to a barbecue at her house in Chappaqua. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. But she's so she's so lovely. And it's been wonderful to to meet her and and work with her. And, you know, in the capacity, it's been very small on my end of things, but like it's just been great. She's so great. Let's talk about the Tonys. Let's talk about them. <laughs> It was wild. It was wild. I've been watching these every year since I was like seven or eight. And yeah, it was, it's the, the day is crazy. It's a, it's a bonkers day. You have a rehearsal in the morning that they mm -hmm. film in case anything right. goes wrong with the broadcast. So at like eight oh, o'clock, you have to be ready to go. Mm -hmm. We get to the theater, we get in full hair and makeup and costume. And then this is, this was very sweet too. They, the people who drive the bus, they want to practice the route too. So like you get on oh. the bus that you're going to take later. And like, it's a full dress rehearsal. It's, it's rehearsal. amazing. So it's like, you're full everything. It's very early in the morning. You get on the bus, you go, you do your segment, you come back. We had a show that day. So it's like, right. we, we did the morning thing and then we had the show and then there was some downtime. Oh. And I was, <laughs> we were sitting Jen and I were sitting in the box watching Titanic, just trying to distract ourselves. And then <laughs> the phones start blowing up because the the first half of the Tonys isn't televised on Paramount. Right. It was like Tubi or something, which we don't have on our phones. So our phones start right. blowing up and they're like, oh my God, she won, she won for, what was it for best? It was best book. It was best book. Yep. It was the first one. Yep. And we, we lost our minds and we're like, why are we watching Titanic? Like, this is nuts. Like, let's go find a TV. And so we think we went down in a wardrobe and we were watching the the whole first bit and it didn't really hit me. I was like watching it and I was like, oh my God, in like two hours, I'm going to be back on that stage. Like it just, the yeah. whole thing was so unbelievably surreal. And then, yeah. you know, we get back in makeup and hair and costume and we get back on the bus and they're about to do score and we're mm -hmm. outside. Of the, of the theater because it's so choreographed like they don't let you in until a certain time oh, wow. so we're standing mm -hmm. inside of Lincoln Center we're huddled around Jenna's phone she has her little phone and we're just watching <laughs> and then Shayna won for best score and we lost our minds like do we just the yeah. scream that we unleashed could have been heard in Yonkers I have no <laughs> doubt just and the fact that we were there and like we were right outside and then they let us in and the holding hallway that we were in just so happened to be the hall, the where Shayna's room was, where she was getting ready. So like we're uh -oh. all like we come down the hall and she sees us and we see her and we all just start crying and yeah, it was so it was such a special night. It was such a special night. Oh. And my heel broke on stage, which was oh crazy. no, <laughs> but like so appropriate for me. Like it was it oh, was yeah. so unbelievably it was so unbelievably special. It was like it's set that whole day is such a core core memory right in yeah. in the video for the tonys do you have that exact moment you think where your heel broke no you don't see it and it was it was oh, good. Like, no the, facial cameras kept, like, the cameras kept moving they were moving so much and like <gasps> i was so sure that it's all anybody was seeing because like <laughs> like when something right. like that happens to you you're like oh my god and i'm on national television everybody's yep. watching this and i was like center for a lot of it and yep. then like watching it back, you don't see Nothing. any of it. You don't see any of it, which I was so grateful for. But like when we're coming off stage, I like had my heel in my hand and I felt the urge to be like to the camera, my heel broke. Like I had, I had to like justify whatever so you saw on stage, whatever craziness. I was right. like, it was this, it wasn't me. I swear it was my heel. It was, my heel. It was, it was just so, it was very cool. It was very yeah. cool. What do you think now we we know how Gen Z is these days? I don't know if we were really ever like this. Like I, I don't think we were very political as kids. We we were like aware, but not like to this point of like these kids go and like march, you know, things and call people out online, you know. 
yeah. just crazy things. Like, what do you think Gen Z can take away from the show if they're, you know, really into politics or yeah. really want to get, you know? I think if anything, it's like, if anything, I think the takeaway might be that like, the act of dissent is like so inherently normal. Like it just, it lives inside of all of us, right? So like when they when they go out in March, it's like, I I don't mean to say that the Suffs did it first, but the Suffs did it first. Like yeah, oh yeah. the first, it yeah. was the first ever March on Washington happened in 1913. Like when we right. talked about picketing and like, like standing outside of buildings with signs, the Suffs literally did that first, you know? So it's right. like, I think if anything, it's this like, it's this beautiful cyclical thing of like, no, you have this impulse to do this. You have this urge to like, go out and make change. And it's so natural. Like, of course you have right. that urge. Like it, it's, it's there. It's a, it's a part of what makes you a human, I think. And like, follow that urge, follow that impulse. And the other thing about Gen Z too, and I think millennials really struggle with this, or at least this, this one does, they are so <laughs> good about talking about what they need and, yes. and advocating for themselves. Like, the vocabulary that Gen Z has to be like, hey, you know what? I actually don't like how you're talking to me right now. My millennial right. is like, but if I say that, somebody might not like me or somebody might right. think I'm difficult or somebody might think I'm I'm <laughs> like, like, well, I can't advocate for myself. I just have to shut up and right. take it. And Gen Z is so good at being like, actually, bro, no, you don't. And like, yeah. I learned from Gen Z that like, it is okay to say what you need. And there is a way to do it that doesn't make you a douche. Like you can just, right. you can do it in a very respectful way. And I think this this generation has a really great grasp and hold on that. And I think also the, the growing up in the pandemic, like, oh yeah, they, they got a really short end of the stick. And I think they're they're doing a really good job with what they, yeah. with what they have. But they're a very oh, aggressive generation. They're very like, I see them and I'm like, I'm going to get out of your way. <laughs> so, I'm gonna, like, you, guys, you guys know what you're doing. You're you're okay. <laughs> like right now, Be With Some Butthead is coming back on. And people are like, oh my God, I've never seen that before. I will say <laughs> them trying to re-implement low rise jeans does feel like a <laughs> personal attack. That, and that's really all I'll say about it. That just feels like that specific. I was like, I can kind of get behind the middle part. Okay. Yeah. Low yeah. rise jeans. I'm like, why are you coming for me? <laughs> we the... did this all. I lived through this already. And I yeah. survived by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> I'd rather not <laughs> do it again. Oh, yeah. Like, you go to like Walmart and stuff. All the, um, what is it? The bright colors are back. The peace. I mean, we didn't do the peace signs and stuff, obviously. Like the, you know, the yin and yang that came from the seventies. We stole that. But <laughs> I mean, it's all coming back. Like the furry things, yeah. the inflatable things. Well, um, yeah. Oh, I remember those. I remember those. <laughs> God, what a time. What yeah. A time. Yeah. What a time. To anyone who aspires to be on Broadway or wants to start into this uh, industry. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the, the biggest thing that I will say is just lean into what makes you, you. I think there is such a focus on comparison and like, I have to sound like this person or I have to do it this way. And it's like, if you're trying to emulate someone else, you are only ever going to be like a cheap imitation of that person. Why would you not spend all of your energy on making yourself the strongest version of you as opposed to trying right. to be like someone else or sound like someone else? Lean into what makes you you because that is at the end of the day, what people are going to respond to. That's what people are going to be excited about. It's not about, you know, I mean, I've never been a fan of like the cookie cutter mentality anyway, just because no. of who I am and like, right. I have never, if that was never going to be me, I was never going to be this like cookie cutter. So mm -hmm. now I'm at this point and I, I, I'm learning it later in my life. And I wish somebody had told me this when I was starting out 
embrace yourself, embrace what makes you weird. Jen always says like, you're never weird alone in theater. Like the number of times that somebody will be doing like a, like a silly dance backstage. And then we all just start <laughs> doing it. It's like, nobody's weird. If we're all weird together, you know what I mean? Like right. embrace that, love that. And, and this is a big one too. Cause I feel like this piece of advice that I got is simultaneously the best and the worst piece of advice that I got, which was <laughs> say yes to everything because it's like, it, it feeds into that sort of like FOMO mentality where it's like, well, if I don't say yes to this, then somebody else will. And like, what is that? Right. If somebody else says it then, then am I losing an opportunity? And I think the older I get, the way that I've reshaped that is like, say yes to the things that spark something inside of you. Yes. And know that it is okay to turn things down. Like this FOMO mentality or this like, I have to do it. If I don't, somebody else will. Fantastic. Somebody else is maybe better for it. Somebody else is maybe the right person. Like it, it is so for me about quality over quantity mm -hmm. and, and doing things that are in alignment with your personal why and your personal mm -hmm. beliefs. And like, granted, yes, it's, Sometimes you need to take the job for the paycheck. I understand that too. But like right. the fastest way to get burnt out is to just say yes to every single yes. thing. There is a lot of power in saying no. And also like when you say no to something, it lets people know that you know what you're doing. It lets people know that you have a really good grasp on who you are and what you're selling and what you want to be doing. If that makes sense. Yes. Like if, yeah. if, if you're, if you're saying yes to everything, even to things that you are not right for, for whatever reason, people are like, oh, all right, that's weird. They don't really, I don't really think they, they have a good sense of self. Whereas if you take things that are very smart and very like, this is going to showcase me in the best possible way. People are like, ah, they know what they're doing. They know what yes. they're saying. They know what they bring to the table. And it's exciting. It's exciting. Cause a lot of times Creative people are not very creative. They like to be told. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they really no, it like is. to be told. And and we crave organization. Crave organization. And, routine. and if you can make someone's job easier by being like, hi, this is what I do, and I do it very well, people will be like, oh my God, thank you. Thank you for <laughs> not making me categorize you into something. Like it, people like it. They really do respond to it. So yeah, be be so uniquely yourself. There is power in the word no. And like, just stand firmly in who you are. Cause I'm a girl.